Okay, optimization problems. Uh, this is going to be a little bit like, uh, kind of like related rates. They're, they're, they can be lengthy word problems, a lot of information that you may have to uh, cipher through and, and, and pull out, and then we'll have to set up some equations. Uh, we will do derivatives and a bunch of stuff like that, but ultimately what we're going to try to do is, is find the maximum and minimum uh, or minimum of different types of situations. Uh, kind of hard to explain, so we're just going to dive in and start doing a few optimization problems. Uh, the first two are going to be kind of uh, straightforward and simple. Uh, it says find two numbers such that their product is a maximum and their sum is 15. So here we are looking for two numbers, and I'm just going to call them x and y for the sake of simplicity. So we have x and y. Those are two numbers we're looking for. It's talking about their product. So I know that their product is x times y. Uh, we don't know what their product is. We want to maximize the product. So we can't say exactly what that equals. But we do know that their sum is 15. So if I add the two numbers, I'll get 15. And with most optimization problems, you will have to, you will find two equations. Uh, one of them is the one you're maximizing. And in this case, we are maximizing the product. So I'm going to put a little star here because that's the one we want to maximize. And if you want to find the maximum or the minimum of anything, you have to remember that maxima and minima occur at critical points. So what we'll have to do is take the derivative of the product, find the uh, critical points, and determine whether the critical points are a max or a min. Uh, well, right now the derivative of the product is going to be a little bit hairy because, well, it's a product and I don't like product rule. Um, but more than that, we have two different variables. And if possible, I would like to have just one variable. And that's where this second equation comes in handy. That since I know that x plus y equals 15, then I could solve for either x or y. In this case, it doesn't matter because they're both about as, e uh, as easy. So um, solve for one is not easier than the other is what I mean. So I will just say x equals 15 minus y. Move that y over. And then I can take 15 minus y over and substitute it in for x in my product formula. So now I have my product, instead of being x times y, my product is 15 minus y times y. And so I've got it down to one variable. And then we need to take the derivative because we have to find critical points. We want to find the maximum. So I'm going to find the derivative of this. And this is not a tricky derivative. We're not going to do implicit differentiation here. We're just going to do the straight up derivative. Um, we're going to do the derivative of p, and since p is in terms of y, I'll do dp dy. Uh, ooh, but I'm not going to do that yet, because right now it's a product. So let's distribute this y. Let's say 15y minus y squared. Turn it into a power rule. So now my derivative is 15 minus 2y. And remember, we're looking for critical numbers. So if I'm going to find critical numbers, I'll set this equal to 0, and you will get y is equal to 15 over 2. Um, or that's the same thing as 7.5. Uh, and if that's y, then x, we know that x is 15 minus y, so x is 15 minus 7.5, and x is also 7.5. So there are the two numbers. And since it's easy in this problem, we need to make sure that this critical number, 7.5, was a critical number for my function p. We need to make sure that it's actually a maximum, because sometimes critical numbers are minima. Uh, so we need to verify that this is a max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the second derivative of p, which is simply negative 2. And what I'm doing here is the second derivative test. Since my second derivative is negative 2, that second derivative is always negative. Therefore, my function p is always concave down. And if a function is concave down, then any critical number is going to be a max. So therefore, I know that x equals 7.5 and y equals 7.5 yields the max, gives the max product. And so that's the brains behind an optimization problem. Uh, like I said, most of the time, you will have two equations. There's my final answer. You will need two equations. One of the equations is the one in which the, uh, the one that you're going to find the derivative of. The second equation will be used to get the first equation in terms of one variable. 
Uh, so let's try that on number two here. Find two numbers, again, two numbers. So we'll say x equals, or not x equals. So we have two numbers, x and y. Um, one is the reciprocal of the other. Uh, so if one is the reciprocal of the other, then that means I could just say, well, I don't know, uh, y is the reciprocal of x. So I could say y equals 1 over x. So I've taken the reciprocal thing, and the sum of the two numbers is a minimum. So I'm going to find the sum. I don't want to call it s. I guess I will. s is going to be a minimum. So I'll take my sum, s, which is x plus y, and we need that to be a minimum. This is the one we're, in this case, minimizing although still we call these optimization problems. Um, so we're going to find the minimum of s, which means that's what I want to take the derivative of, but I need one variable, and that's where this comes in handy. So I have y equals 1 over x. I will substitute 1 over x in for y. So I'm going to take this, plug it in for y right here, and I get s is equal to 1 plus 1 over, not 1, x plus 1 over x, and then we'll take the derivative of that. Um, now, before I do the derivative, 1 over x is x to the negative 1. So now my derivative, s prime, is 1 minus x to the negative 2. We will set that equal to 0 to determine um, critical numbers. So 1 over, or 1 minus 1 over x squared needs to equal 0. I'll move the 1 over x squared over. 1 equals 1 over x squared. Multiply both sides by x squared. x squared equals 1. And I get x to be positive or negative 1. So we actually have two critical numbers here. Um, and so since I have two critical numbers, and I'm trying to determine when I have a minimum, I'm going to have to do either for first or second derivative test to figure that out. So let's see what we have here. OK, so. I just shrunk it up to give myself a little bit more room. Okay, so I need to determine whether 1 or negative 1 gives the minimum. So I'm a fan of second derivative test when the second derivative is easy. So here I know that my first derivative is 1 minus x to the negative 2. So I'm going to take that and say that the second derivative is going to be 2x to the negative 3 or 2 over x cubed. And I'm going to plug each one of my uh, critical numbers into that. So I have s double prime of 1 is going to equal 2. That's positive 0. Positive zero. That's a positive number. And if my second derivative is positive, my function will be concave up, which that will be a min. So by the second derivative test, I know that x equals 1 is a minimum. And negative 1 is probably going to be a max, but let's plug it in just to make sure. So 2 over negative 1 cubed, that is going to be negative, which means my function will be concave down. And x equals positive 1 is a max, but I don't want a max. I want the minimum. So by the second derivative test, I was able to find out that, wait, that was negative 1. There we go. I was able to find out that 1 actually does give me the minimum. So we're going to pull this answer. x equals 1 is a min. But we needed to find two numbers, not just one of them. So x equals 1, and y is the reciprocal of x. So y is 1 over 1, or just 1, and that would be your answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, one more problem, one more problem. Um, here's a little bit more real-life application here. See, a gnome has 500 feet of fencing to build a holding pen for cats and my mother-in-law. This pen has two areas. Um, separated by a single fence, pictured below. And uh, I want to know what is the largest possible area to be enclosed. So here we have the fence. You see the cat, and you can see my mother-in-law right there. And we have them all fenced in, and everything's safe. Um, so here we've got to figure out how we're going to get this done. We're talking about the area here. And what, what I have is a huge rectangle. So I'm going to call this dimension x. And I'm going to call its height y. And I want to maximize area, which would be x times y. Um, well, then we also know that we have 500 feet of fencing. So we've got to figure out how we're going to get 500 feet of fencing in. Um, because this one, I cannot just go ahead and do the derivative because I have two variables. I have to find that second equation. Uh, and that second equation is the total length of fence. So if I look at my total length, I have an x. I have another x up here. So my total length is going to be 2x for the top and the bottom. And then the, the left fence, 
the right fence and the one separating uh, the cats from my mother-in-law is also y, so I have 2x plus 3y, and then I tell you that my total fence length is 500. Um, well, now I'm going to use this equation to solve for either x or y, so I can substitute it in for the area. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one you choose, but I am going to choose to solve for x because if I divide by 2, 2 will go into 500 nice and sexy-like, 3, not so much. So we're going to solve this thing for x. Um, let's move that 3y over 500 minus 3y. I'll divide by 2. Uh, 500 divided by 2 is 250 minus 3 divided by 2. We'll just leave as 3 halves y. Then I will take this. Since that's what x equals, I can now take it and substitute it in for x up here. And that will make my derivative workable. So my area is going to be 250 minus 3 halves y times y. Uh, let's distribute the y before I do the derivative. So 250y minus 3 halves y squared. Now I can take the derivative. 250 minus 3y. Ooh, that's pretty nice. 250 minus 3y. Ooh, this is going to get kind of ugly here. Um, so I brought down the two. Yeah, that's right. Then when I solve for y, we're going to get something kind of ugly. I probably should have chosen my numbers a little bit better, but 250 divided by 3, which will not clean up. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, let's make sure, let's make sure that my, uh, let's make sure that my critical number here of 250 over 3 is actually a maximum because we do want the largest possible area. We want to maximize it. So my second derivative is going to be 250. No, it's not. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, this is my first derivative. My second derivative is negative 3, which is always less than 0. Therefore, my function will be concave down, and um, 250 over 3 is a max. So a uh, second derivative does show that 250 over 3 is a max. So I know that y is equal to 250 over 3, and x is going to equal 250 minus 3 halves times 250 over 3, and that will clean up kind of sexy-like. Let's see, 3's cancel, 2 goes into 250 125 times, and 250 minus 125, you get x to be 125, and include units, because we do have units here, that is in feet, so feet and feet, um, so there's my x and y. Ooh, almost stopped. Almost stopped. The problem didn't ask you to find the dimensions. The problem said, what is the largest possible area? So now that I have the dimensions, I need to finish up to get the largest possible area, which means my area is actually going to be 250 over 3 times 125, which is not going to clean up. Uh, if you, I suppose if you really want, you could punch that in a calculator. Let's see here. 250 divided by 3 times 125, and you get 10,416.667, and that is 6 repeated. Uh, or if you want to reduce the fraction, which I don't think that's going to reduce. Um, oh, man, it didn't even give me a fraction answer. How stupid. Uh, the fraction's not going to reduce, but that's my total area in feet squared. There we go. There we go. So that's uh, three optimization problems. Those were relatively straightforward. Just like related rates, we're going to start with some that are a little bit nicer. Although number three got a little bit tricky. Uh, and then these things are really going to take off and have a life of their own. So there we go. We'll talk about them in class.